Did you know fascia is a fascinating organ of communication? You probably have heard there are many ways to improve communication. There are coaches, there are therapists, there are different tools and methods to help us communicate better. And regardless of what steps and route I would say you decide to take, looking at your whole system versus parts of your body and behavior is a holistic perspective I propose. So let's take a deep look underneath your skin, okay? I like to say, just as fascia connects an international audience of outstanding researchers and medical practitioners, it physically forms a continuous tensional network throughout the human body, connecting every single organ, muscle, nerve, and tiny fibers underneath the skin. Whether you are aware of it, fascia indeed plays an enormous, I would say, key communicator role in our daily lives. For the last decade, I have actually enjoyed very much the process of collecting data on fascia. It has been a curious, I would say, journey to understand and heal myself from physical and emotional pain, and of course, become a genuine communicator. Today, I respect and appreciate the process and the emotions, of course, that it came from it. There are different definitions of fascia, and if you are interested to view most of them, of course, I kindly invite you to view our blog, but for the purpose of this video, let me share that Findlay and Schleip in 2007 have defined fascia quite broadly to include all of the soft fibrous connective tissues that penetrate the human body. Again, they are not the only ones who've tried to give really fascia a meaning or relevance. Collectively, I can say, science suggests that the fascial system might be the largest system in the body that connects to every aspect of human physiology. And from that perspective, it's believed fascia is involved in everything we do. It helps our body to work as a unified wholeness. And as a passionate structural balance and flexibility coach, I feel it's really important, or maybe the most crucial part, is understanding the value of fascia quality and its relevance in life and movement. And just recently, I actually have learned from one of the most respected scientists in the fascia field, Jab van der Waal, that fascial com complexity begins in the development in the human embryo. And the process of embryological fascial development seems to be quite fascinating, almost mind-boggling, I would say. Based on my personal life experiences with emotional and physical pain, I strongly believe the fascial network is one of our richest sensory organs that can help us move effortlessly, it can free us up from any traumatic experiences, and if nurtured nutritionally and therapeutically through movement and touch, I believe it can change the way we live and experience life. And the subject of how we experience what is going on with and in our body, how it is correlated to fascial uh, receptors, emotions, and self-awareness is elaborated in the second edition of the Tensional Network of the Human Body, written by Robert Schleip and many other uh, very well-known and respected scientists. And if you are interested to learn what we know about the nutritional needs of fascia and the neighboring tissues, I invite you to watch our online lectures. They are based on the most recent science and they break down really how to take the science to your kitchen. But for now, I would like to share that essentially fascia is made of three elements. Number one, fibers. And collagen is the most prevalent protein. And then elastin. The second element is ground substance. It's jelly-like uh, material that consists of water and it behaves like a sponge that wants to absorb water. And then the third one is water in itself. And most of the water in fascia is bound, like the fluid, again, absorbed by a wet sponge that I just shared with you, yes? So here is what it's really critical and I would like to share about fascia and hydration. It's important to know that hydrating doesn't 
come just from how much water you drink. Yes, it's very important and it matters, but where in can the water get to the tissues is what makes them hydrated or dehydrated. And through a movement in different loading patterns, you squeeze the water out of your tissues and then you need to rest for the water to come back into the tissues to avoid dehydrated tissues, which are sticky and unmovable. And do you know what else happens when your fascia is dehydrated? It starts to lose collagen. Like I said, an essential protein of fascia and other actually connective tissues as well. It's a crucial part of every layer of your body, from the skin to the bone. And if you are interested to watch a nutritional class actually on collagen, please again check our online classes on recent website. We have also more in-depth, I would say, courses based on the most recent research on the nutritional needs of different connective tissues and fascia, the neighboring tissues. So I invite you to check all of our online classes. And for now, I would like to share some interesting facts to help you value fascia as the key communicator. Are you ready? So let's start with, you know, one of my favorite as a structural balance coach. Did you know that actually plantar fascia has shown to contribute to sensory motor regulation of your postural control? Correct. Fascia is really uh, responsible or it can support, I should say, postural balance. And as we know, posture correlates to your emotional well-being. So super important. Next, the more collagen-rich fascia is, the more tensile strength it has, making your body more stable and allowing better force transmission. Correct. The more collagen-rich your fascia is, it correlates to a healthier movement and body. Okay, next one. Did you know that muscles hardly ever transmit their full force directly via tendons into the skeleton? They distribute a large portion of their tensional forces onto fascial sheets, which then transmit the forces to synergistic and antagonistic muscles. Meaning, the quality of your fascia dictates the quality of your movement and entire musculoskeletal system. And the next interesting fact is, which I'm not sure you are aware of, fascial stiffness and elasticity play a significant role in ballistic movements. Therefore, how far you can jump or throw a ball depends on not only on the contraction of your muscle fibers, it also depends to a large degree on how well the elastic recall properties of your fascial network are supporting those movements. And maybe last one. Did you know fascia plays a role in muscle regeneration and adaptation of muscle size? It really does. That's why the way you mechanically load your body will impact your myofascial system, strength, stability, pliability, and shape as well. I believe this knowledge will really help you respect your own fascial network. The more you know about fascia in itself, the more you can really stay connected and I truly believe understand your body better. And as you may know from my previous videos, my goal is to help people live healthier life. My goal is to help you live healthier life. Today, I'm thankful for scientists like Fabiana Silva, or again, Yap van Delvel, Yap van Dervel, excuse me, for helping us to really understand that environmental metabolic responses integrated with our genetics are relevant to fascial tissues and its health. Thank you for your attention and your time today. Make sure to check our new online classes to learn how to take care of your fascia and other tissues nutritionally. It is a must-have knowledge, I would say, for strength and performance coaches, for registered dietitians, for nutritionists, and other health professionals. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to get the most recent data and, of course, research. Visit our website, recentproducts.com, to read the full blog on fascia being the key and fascinating communicator in our body. Enjoy it.